The police like stopped us, you know, like they, they, they were right in the middle of the road and they were waving people to go over. Some people were over, some people were there. And they said, apparently there was an air um, police that saw uh, some red cars and yellow cars and stuff going really fast. Going back to finding a um, passion, I think people should experience more things. The more things you experience, just go ahead and give it a try. Don't be so safe. Just give it a try. See if you like it. You, will you get an allocation for Monza SP1 or SP2? Now, Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to The Stable. And I'm David Lee, Ferrari Collector, and I'm here to answer some more of your questions. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. Do you watch Formula One, and have you been for any races live? Well, um, I do watch Formula One, I love it, and I think the, the show on Netflix, we'll give him a plug, on Netflix is really good. It really gets into the team dynamics, the, the, the personality of each um, driver, and it's cool. I mean. Uh, Rolex, of course, as you know, is a major sponsor of the uh, F1, and so I have had opportunities to go in Austin, uh, uh, Circuit of America. I've been to various races. I would like to go more, and I will probably go more. F1 is basically the pinnacle of automotive racing. So uh, to, be, to see what those cars can do, to see the technology of those cars, um, and certainly now that we know the uh, personalities of all the various racers and the team, it's just so much fun. So the second question, what is the best business advice someone has given to you? Well, I would have to say that would be my father. He's given me a lot of advice and various things. You know, that's how we communicate, kind of father and son. You know, it's a, a very Chinese, old school way, right? Always teaching you something. It's always a teaching moment and to show their appreciation. Um, and, and certainly that's what my father did. So in our communication, uh, it wasn't so much, uh, how, was, uh, how was the game today? How was the football practice? How was uh, pole vault practice? It wasn't really about that. It was just about business, you know? And I would say among all the things, and sometimes you might have heard me say it before, kind of the three golden rules that I've kind of compiled as the backbone uh, of business ethics and what is the pillars for even my businesses. One is to work hard, one is to work with perseverance, and one is work with integrity. Very simple kind of concept, but really can get very deeply into each one. If you want to hear more about my advice on you know, the road to success, comment down below and let me know. All right, let's go with the next question. Have you gotten a ticket in one, any of your Ferraris. Well, it's interesting, uh, I've gotten my share of tickets and most of them is not in my Ferrari. But with Ferrari, I only really got one ticket. And um, it's a funny story, so I'm gonna tell you about it. So every year, I, I drive uh, up to Monterey for the Monterey Car Week, you know, Pebble Beach, Concourse Elegance, Quail. And I go with my friend um, that have organized Italian Stampede. Ellie, Ellie Rothstein. And we would go up there with a hundred cars, Italian cars, and, and, and through doing that every year, you know, you make friends. So we had a, a, tight, a little core group of friends, about maybe, I would say, 10 or so cars that we would drive up together because everybody has different groups of cars drive up together. We all get there at the same time, but we have our group. So I remember one time I was driving my LaFerrari, other people were driving their uh, Porsches and their McLarens and their Lamborghinis and stuff. I was driving the, my LaFerrari and we were on this stretch of the road that was um, I think the, the five and it was right in the middle. I mean we were just kind of in the middle uh, between LA and Monterey. It was no cars there. It was very straight, no curvy, anything. We looked around. Nobody's around for miles and we said hey you know let's see what this car can do. And so, you know, we had walkie-talkies who were talking to each other with our friends. I said, let's, let's just jump on it and see what happens. So, we, again, we looked clear, no, no what's, um, what's a ways didn't even show anything, right, as far as police being around or anything like that. But most, most important, it was safe. There was nobody around. So I, I gunned it first. Instantly got up to 200 miles per hour. I have to tell you, La, the LaFerrari really responded well. The, 
the aerodynamics of the air, how it pushed down on the car so that you don't feel very floaty or very kind of um, not tight to the ground. That was well designed, you know, at that speed. Now things were coming very quickly. The steering was also very precise, so you don't feel out of play because you, when you drive that fast, you don't want to feel out of play. So it was just solid. So that car um, was amazing in speed. And I, again, I was in 200 miles per hour and I felt like I still could have put more. I could have, you know, continued to have my foot on the pedal to the floor and I still had the power still could have gone because I think that car goes like 230 miles per hour. It still could have gone and I didn't push it. But, you know, and, and that's it. I, and then I let off. Everybody went and I think we were all going around similar speed. So we, we, we you know, we let off and we we're OK. So we just drove regular and then down the road, miles down the road, we we, there was a, the police like stopped us, you know, like they, they, they were right in the middle of the road and they were waving people to go over. Some people were over, some people were there. And they said, apparently there was an air um, police that saw uh, some red cars and yellow cars and stuff going really fast. And so there was air patrol and they waved some people over. Now, I don't know why they waved some people over and they didn't wave the other. They, they waved um, probably like five or six of us over and gave us tickets. And they were like, um, and they were doing us a favor. They said we could, have, you know, put you for jail because obviously over the, a certain amount, over 30 miles from the speed limit, they could put you in jail. Um, but they didn't do that. They just gave us tickets. So then, you know, we, 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 had to, we handled it later. But um, you know what? Uh, we got a ticket. Um, we didn't go to jail. It, it was so fast, uh, 200 miles per hour in my La Ferrari. And it was worth it. It was just for that experience. Again, it was safe, but it was worth it. So next question. Will you get an allocation for Monza SP1 or SP2? Now, I did get an allocation uh, for my dealer. And uh, as I studied this car, because in the US, uh, this car has no windshield. It's a beautiful work of art. Um, obviously, it was like the uh, Sterling Moss Mercedes. And of course, they, now they made a version here for Ferrari and they also made a version of McLaren. But in the US, it's not road legal. It's, it cannot be registered. So for that reason, uh, and you gotta wear a helmet. And for that reason, um, you know, I know if my, my wife was to be a passenger, she's not gonna wear uh, a helmet. So it just wasn't really practical. And, um, and I'm, I'm not looking for a race car to drive on a track or anything. I, you know, I like road cars uh, or road track cars. So, that it just didn't really fit my lifestyle, so I didn't um, want, to, want to order one. Next question. What tips do you have for young adults struggling to find their passion? You know, finding passion is important because when you are passionate about something and when you uh, spend your time to do it, it doesn't feel like work. It's not a drag. You're not looking at your time. You're not you know, there's, you can spend all the time in there and it's still fun. And that's an important thing. You know, people say, well, can I find passion work or do I just find passion in fun things, hobbies? And, and both ways you can do that. If you can find it at work, it would be amazing because work wouldn't feel like work anymore because you're never really working if you're doing something with passion. And certainly if you do work because it pays the bills and, 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 and that's important too, then you, you know, things that maybe are uh, a hobby that you have passion about it. When you do it, you even feel better about it. You feel like just so much more, um, it's worth so much more of your time. It's so enjoyable. Sometimes not doing things all the time is better because when you only do things for a little bit part of your time, it's more precious and more treasured. But going back to finding a um, passion, I think people should experience more things. The more things you experience, just go ahead and give it a try. Don't be so safe. Just give it a try. See if you like it. You, a lot of things I've done, I, I didn't know that I would like it until I did it, and I realized how much I like it. And you're going to have probably, let's say if you do you know, a bunch of things, you're going to find maybe five things you like, and you're going to find within that five things, there's some things you like better than others. I have a lot of hobbies. You know, I like cars. I like motorcycles. I like fine dining, I like wine, I like golf, um, I like uh, tennis, you know, collecting guitars, playing guitars. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that I like, but there's certainly some things I like more than others. And certainly, I, I guess you can imagine my passion for Ferrari, Ferrari collecting, Ferrari driving, um, and all that uh, is, is the top of the list.
By the way, I saw a lot of you comment on why I only collect Ferraris. And I actually answered that before in my Q&A. So if you click this link here, it will bring you back to my answer there. So next question, what is your daily driver? Well, the, my daily driver changes um, throughout the year, depending on what I'm getting. My, lately, my daily driver has been a um, early uh, Porsche Panamera. Um, you know, those, those Porsches are really good workhorses. They're really reliable and, you know, more uh, inconspicuous. But soon I'll be getting my Roma, and that will actually be my new daily driver. Next question. What do you think is the best way to network with successful entrepreneurs and people? You know, just having a mentor, talking to people that have experience, talk, talking to veterans of a particular industry business is always good, right? Um, somebody that has experience. Let's not go so far, you know, we'll, let's find Bill Gates, you know? I mean, it's, it's somebody with experience, with business that has a few years ahead of you, that, that, that have learned a thing or two. You know, by talking to them and being a sponge and listening, you learn. Don't, don't be eagerly to talk, listen, okay? And I remember when I first started, I was like a sponge. You know, in the jewelry business, I talked to all kinds of people, people that were uh, in the wholesale, people that were manufacturing, people in retail, people were selling this stuff or that stuff. Because I haven't found my own on where my path is as far as my business. But I listened anyways and, and absorbed. Because what happens is after you absorb everything, you process in your mind, you figure out what is right for you, what is your path. And I think that that is what is more important. And always networking with people, learning people is so important. I mean, right now, my, you know, after school, I was at USC and I had my business degree, entrepreneurism. Uh, and, um, you, know, you know, you can only go to school so much. And then afterwards, it's the real world. You learn on the job. You learn on yourself. Then how else do you learn? Well, peer to peer. You learn from other business people. You know, that's how you learn from people to people learning. That's, that's uh, what I would say about that. Okay, next question. What would you do for a living if you weren't in the jewelry business? You know, it's interesting. Um, I, I find that business in business or in the working world, you, if there's two, two kind of categories, you're either a tradesman or you are a entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. A tradesman, for example, is somebody, if, if I was kind of bred to be I grew up in the jewelry business, bred to do jewelry uh, business, and I do that, and I do it well, and, and I perform well, that's great, because I understand that business, I can duplicate a lot of the things, I understand a lot of concepts that I've learned throughout my, and I do that and I make a living. Fine, perfectly fine. The, the other way to look at it is a serial, serial entrepreneur, where you understand the business concept, Let's say, for example, if you did retail, you understand retail, but you not only understand retail of selling jewelry and watches, but you understand retail of selling other luxury items, uh, other luxury product, because everything is really selling a product or a service. But if you understand the business model, you can, it's just different products or different services. So for me, um, I feel that I'm a serial entrepreneur. I understand the concept. That's why I have a lot of different kind of businesses. Um, I try to stay within my space, which is a luxury space. I know the luxury clientele, I can, I can, but I can sell different product or different services. But it's still the same mindset, right? It's still really the same clientele. So, and I, I guess I've been successful at that. So that, that's how I would classify myself as that. So that's all the questions for today. Thank you for listening. And uh, I want you guys to next time send me videos of your questions. I want to hear from your fans. I want to see your face. I want to see and hear the questions you have for me. Okay, until next time, we'll see you soon.